How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at this Epson 837. This printer, I purchased it at a thrift store, paid $15 for it and we're going to step by step go through troubleshooting to try to get this printer working. I just want to show exactly like what I'm doing to try to get this thing ready to work or to get it ready to sell it and kind of like walk through the testing process, I guess. Hopefully this video will help somebody else that's trying to connect their Epson Artisan 837 to Wi-Fi or troubleshoot some sort of other problem with their printer. And if you could please give the video a thumbs up so more people could find it to help with their printer problems so they don't throw them out the window or throw them in the trash. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. And with that being said, let's get into the printer. So we paid $15 from a thrift store earlier this year and it's just been sitting on a shelf waiting for me to make this video. Why did I buy this printer? Well, I took the model number, Artisan 837, plugged it into my phone to look on eBay. These sold listings look to be anywhere between $150 and $200. And then if I can guarantee that it works and describe that I've fully tested it, I feel I can get closer to $200 to $250. And it's good to have a wireless inkjet printer that prints great photos at your house. And if you can pick one up on the cheap, why not save it? These printers actually print a pretty good photo. And right here it says Wi-Fi. It is a Wi-Fi capable printer, which means I will be able to print off of my phone, my tablet, my computer, or whatever. If you check the back out, it's got this big thing that goes on the back I can take it off. This is actually a duplex printer, meaning that I can print automatically on both sides. It's got USB, it's got Wi-Fi as well as ethernet and here is the power supply over here. So we're gonna put the duplex container back in. First thing we're gonna have to do, plug in our power supply, which is just takes a three prong, plug it in, and we're going to plug this into the wall. And this printer has a power button right here that we're going to press and let it boot up. And I'll bring you guys to a different angle because this angle is not gonna work because the screen's right here. Okay, so this is about the best angle that I can get. As you can hear, it is annoyingly chirping at us and it comes up with this error saying, you need to replace the following ink cartridges, magenta with a 98. We're gonna lift this up. Over here we have our ink cartridges. So we're gonna have to replace magenta 98 to 99. So I'm going to, so we gotta press down to lift out this ink cartridge. This is an OEM Epson ink cartridge. It looks like it has some ink on it, but these are chipped. And if the chip says it's out of ink, then I'm going to have to replace it or get a new chip in order to allow the printer to work. So we went on eBay. I purchased this six pack of Epson ink remanufactured cartridges. It was $17.99 because I didn't know if I would just need one or all. And I have that right here in the, it came in the mail. And let's find our magenta. Take off that thing. And then we're going to place this with the ink still sealed. I'm going to place it where the magenta goes and press it down till it clicks in. I closed the top and now it says that it's checking the ink cartridges again and hopefully it won't give us any type of error and it looks like we're good. I'm gonna take some regular paper and I think we load it into this tray. Oh, I already got some regular paper in this tray. If I didn't, I would load it into this tray, lift this up, make sure this is on letter because this is eight and a half by 11 and then slide it back in. We're gonna go to over, setup. I'm gonna check ink levels. <clears throat> so this is what it says the ink levels are. We'll see if we can print anything. We're gonna maintenance, we do a nozzle check. Start. Okay, so it looks like all of our nozzles, you can see that all of our nozzles are indeed printing. So we're gonna do a head clean now. Oh, it says if any segments are missing, then clean the print head. Well, we didn't have any segments missing, so we're just going to finish nozzle check. We'll go back, we we'll go back, and we're gonna now get this on the Wi-Fi. So I'm looking for setup again. 
We're gonna go to Wi-Fi settings. And this is a nice $15 printer. As you can see, I got, I got a big display and a touch screen. So we're gonna do Wi-Fi setup. We're gonna do WPS, and then I'm gonna go to my router and press. I'm going to hold the WPS button on my router. My power button is now blinking. WPS button looks like that. Then we're gonna go back to the printer and we're going to press OK to proceed and it's going to establish a Wi-Fi connection with the router. Okay, it says Wi-Fi connection has been established. Gonna hit OK. Gonna go back. So now this is on the network. We got a little Wi-Fi signal up here. It is now on the network. If you don't have a WPS button on your router, you could go to setup go over to Wi-Fi, um, then you would go to Wi-Fi setup. You could go to Wi-Fi setup wizard, pick your network name, ours is eight foot ceilings, and then type in your password. It uh, looks like you can only manually type in uppercase letters, numbers, and symbols. So that's not gonna be helpful if you have a printer that, or if you have a Wi-Fi password that has a lowercase, because this doesn't allow us to put type in a lowercase. You might have to plug your printer in with a USB cable and you might have to program the Wi-Fi through an Epson program on the computer. So that is very annoying that they do not allow that. But we got ours on WPS setup. So I'm going to go to my app store and download Epson. I'm just gonna type in Epson printer app and I'm gonna look for Epson print enabler and it just says Epson print enabler lets allows you to print on Android. So that should use our Android functions in order to allow us to print. If I was on an iPhone, I don't think I'd have to download anything. I could just probably print from my iPhone, but I'm on the Android. So I'm gonna see if I can download that. And now I'm going to try to print. Load some photo paper in here. So we're gonna open this back up. Here's our photo paper tray. I'm gonna load in a couple of pieces of photo paper and then we're going to drop that back in. Once I have the photo, I'm gonna go three dots at the top, find the print icon, hit print, and then use this drop down, go to all printers and look for our Epson right there. There it is. It's asking for me to accept terms of use. Sure, we're gonna hit okay. There's our photo. We're gonna change our paper size to four by six and then everything looks good. We're gonna hit print. Okay, and it's gonna send the signal to the printer through the Wi-Fi. It might take a second, there it goes, and it's gonna start printing. Okay, it's telling me that it's still printing, but it's got a low cyan, light cyan, light magenta, and a low black. So we'll see if it actually prints or if I have to go in and actually change the other cartridges as well. Okay, so it looks like the image is printed. The photo looks great, however, it has borders. And I did not, I wanted to print a borderless because I don't wanna to have to cut this out. I'm gonna go back to my phone and I'm gonna download an actual Epson app. I'm gonna download this Epson iPrint app and I think this will give me more options for the paper size and borderless and what I actually want. So I'm gonna open that, agree to the terms, okay, okay. Okay, we can collage photos. So we're gonna print photos. We're gonna allow to look at our device. And we're gonna get that image again. Select, next. Um, we're gonna go to this gear. We're gonna select our printer. Well, it's gonna look for our printer. There's our artisan. And okay, there it goes. It allowed, once I picked my printer, it, it's allowing me to pick bo layout borderless, which is what I want. I'm gonna hit done and then I'm gonna hit print. All right, now it should print how I want it, which will be borderless, but it'll have a little tab right here because the, the paper that I'm using actually is a little bit longer than four by six. All right. There we go. That is what I wanted. I'll snip off this edge and yeah, the printer actually works. I'm surprised. Luckily, I didn't have any clogged print heads. I was hoping to run into something like that. I do have a print head cleaner if I needed that, but that will have to be used in a different video. I will put a link to this in the description. This is what I would be using if one of my print heads was clogged or one of the tubes was kind of like dried out, but I didn't have to do that. So this printer 
is good. I'm going to do more prints on it. I'm going to print, um, print some more family photos and uh, enjoy it while I have it and tech, uh, continue to test it. And I'm going to continue to use this and print color photos and then maybe give it to a family or friend that needs a color printer. With these Epsons, they have these ink cartridges that do not hold a lot of ink, but they do make these continuous ink systems that you can install and then you have like a tank on the outside of the printer that continuously feeds ink to these cartridges and then you basically get almost a uh, very cheap ink using that continuous system i might do an install on this printer i'm not 100 percent sure yet but these epsons are good to do that on i do have memory card readers down here i don't think i talked about that before this printer does do a, a document it does have a document scanner as well as a a flatbed scanner on it so this for fifteen dollars and then seventeen dollars worth of ink is an amazing deal for this printer very very happy we did not have a headache i think it was a success thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions put them in the comment section if you haven't already given the video a thumbs up if you aren't already subscribed to the channel consider subscribing and i'll talk to you guys in the next video thanks for watching bye